Hello YouTube, this is Insane Monster, and we are here for part four of What If Luffy Was Derriere's Son. This was picked via the poll on my community tab for voting for What If to be in between the main What If lineup. Do keep in mind that you guys are actually the one who pick the lineup for the main what ifs as well as the ones that are voted and the ones for the what if lot up. With all that being said, I do hope that you have been enjoying my content, that you are being entertained and enjoying them and such. But with all that taken care of, before we get to the video, links in the description below to a Discord server that has links to merch that, when using said links on the server, will help support the channel. With all that said, hit it. Now then, as Luffy is, and his current crew, which consists of Zoro, Nami, Usopp, Susu, and Neko, as they sail, they end up going to an island like in Canon. This island seems pretty secluded and is said to be uh, the legend Treasure Island. As they begin to go around, Zoro decides to just sit down as they take a break from looking. After they take in all the very, very odd looking animals. As they, one being what looks like a odd hybrid between a rabbit and a snake. And various other chimera looking creatures. As they sit down to relax, they hear a voice that warns them that it is the spirit of the forest. And that if they do not leave, they will be cursed. Luffy doesn't really budge on this thing. Well, if there's something protecting this place, it should have something pretty cool, right? As the voice stutters trying to figure out what to do, only to be ignored by Luffy, Zoro, and the others, as Nami's hoping that they'll find treasure. During this, we see a gun poking out of a bush, and it fires, shooting Luffy in the back, only to be reflected back by his rubber body. As what just shot Luffy runs away, they chase it, only for Susu to chomp down on its head. As it flew directly towards it. Once they catch up and see Susu gnawing on what could be best described as, at least visually, a boxman chia pet. I am not even joking. It is a man stuck in a box with a large green afro making him look like a Chia pet. Don't ask me why they picked this design. I just find it funny. But after some after they calm down and Luffy pried Susu off of the guy's head, he introduced himself as Gaimon, after being referred to as a jack-in-the-box, stating, my name is Gaimon, and, but yeah, he just kind of yells at them to just leave, but wants an explanation of why they, he shot at them, and why is he in a box, also what's with the weird animals. 
as he just begins to explain everything about the animals, the islands, why he's in the box, as well as how he's been stuck there for years. As Luffy and the others do agree to help him out, Usopp's wondering, oh man, this is pretty cool. As Gaimon shows them the way to the treasure that they offered to help him grab, he asked what's with the dog with the wings. Usopp just waves his hand in front of his face, stating, you don't trust me, it's confusing enough i didn't i don't think any of us have actually gotten a proper a, a proper explanation on that or at least i haven't so i just said eh who cares now i'm yelling i would like to know as well but treasure first once they get to the cliff where the treasure supposed to be at the top of luffy just sprouts his wings and flies up there I'm on looking at this thing. Oh, guess there's all types in the world, huh? After a while going through the boxes, Luffy walks towards the edge holding a box, stating, I'm taking all of the treasure. As Nami looks visibly pissed, saying, What are you doing? Why are you going back on the agreement? What, are you just like all the other pirates? Honestly, I should have expected this. As he sees Gaimon crying, he tries to comfort him, only to see him smile, stating, You're a good guy, Straw Hat, aren't you? Visibly confused, Gaimon said, They're empty, aren't they? Luffy sat down, stating, Yep. Every last one of them. Daimon stated that he always knew that could have been a possibility. This island has always been quite numerous, so obviously someone got the treasure before him. As Luffy got down, he smirked, stating, It's okay. But we, even if you don't have your treasure, I could... At least do something else. Come on, looked at him, stating, Come on, kid. You gave me enough already. As Luffy extends his hand, this darkness begins to envelop his arm and extend towards Gaimon as it envelops him. Zoro's just waiting to see what's happened, what's going to happen. Nami's like, What are you doing? What, what crazy thing are you doing now? While Usopp is hiding behind a tree, shaking like a leaf in the breeze, trying to make sense of all this. As Gaimon grits his teeth, they hear something. Wood cracking. Metal breaking. What Luffy is doing is working his shadows around the parts of the box that have some slightly attached themselves to Gaimon's body. As he extends the shadows outwards, it tears the box off of him, only showing little bits of wood stuck to pieces of his skin that he'll have to deal with on his own later. As Luffy smirks, stating, eh, You can have your treasure, but I figured we could at least get you out of the box. As Gaimon cries, saying, Thanks. You're really something, kid. As Usopp stated, Okay, I didn't know you could do that. Luffy smirked, stating, What? It isn't that hard to break wood. Plus, from how long it's been here, it's pretty weak. The only real thing I had to put effort in is the, the metal on the, on the chest. As Gaimon stated, there is one thing, though. Tommy looked at him, saying, Yeah, what? I'm stuck! As they just see him still crouching in the awkward position, 
as he cries, stating, I've been stuck in that position inside that box for so long, my joints are so stiff, I can't move from this position. As they just look at him with a blank stare, Usopp says, um, L Luffy, grab his feet, right? As Luffy grabs his feet, Usopp grabs his hands, and they pull him out, hearing variable pops. As Gamo said, wait, 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 ah! As you can just hear the massive amount of popping from all of his joints being heard over his voice. Because I don't even want to know how stiff that man's skeletal frame is at this point. Once he's all loosened up and able to move properly, with the help of his little animal friends, he's able to walk a little bit normally. The muscle fatigue, as well as the odd muscle proportions from being stuck in there for so long, he'll need to uh, work on that later. After calming down, getting some food and drinks in them, Luffy offers him to join their crew. But I'm on smirk, stating, Yeah, it's fine, kid. I'm not really into that anymore. After so long, I do appreciate you getting me out of that box, but I think it's best that I stay here to protect my own treasure. Remarking about the animals, stating, these guys are pretty unique, and they aren't really violent, so they're pretty much easy pickings for any poachers that come by. I can at least take care of them for now. As Luffy smirks, stating, that's fine with me. After saying their goodbyes and setting sail, they say they wave away from Gaimon, as he sticks on the island, figuring, I suppose I should mm, use some of the plants here to make myself some proper pants. Looking at the tattered rags, his pants that he wore when he got stuck in the box to begin with, practically rotted away. Luckily, not entirely. And with that, we meet the crew back on the ship. As Usopp finally brings up the question about that whole thing with Luffy's hearts and some kind of demon thing. Not to mention the dog and the cat. Nami brings up stating that she did take a glimpse at what he did to Susu. He used the claw out you know, of that dark stuff and made himself bleed into Susu's mouth. So he pulled something out first. What even is it? Luffy dug in his pocket and placed it on the table. He says, it's something my grandpa gave me. I don't know a lot about it, but uh, if I prick my finger uh, and prick somebody else's finger or see or uh, get their blood in it, I uh, can see if they're able to accept the blood without dying. Usopp going frigid at the sound of that. The, the dying? You mean it's possible to die? Luffy shrugged his shoulders, stating, from what my grandpa told me. I don't know why he knows this. He doesn't have the same thing I do. He said it has to do with my mom, but I never met her. And he never really told me anything. As Usopp asks as a question, does that mean your mom has like seven hearts too? What, what is she? What are you? Luffy just thinks back when he asks about that to his grandpa himself when he realized the multiple heartbeats in his chest and he stated and not sure how to answer that but grandpa said it isn't that unusual especially to have added body parts 
or something, especially in a place we're going. Smirking. As Usopp remarked, you mean Tommy's finishing the Grand Line? As he shook his head, stating that his grandpa told him about there were people there that had four elbows with only two arms. Usopp stating, well, wait, wait, what? There's people with that have two elbows on a single arm? How? how? Well, I guess with added body parts like that, uh, I guess maybe Seven Hearts isn't that strange on the Grand Line. Tommy explains of what little she knows about it, that it's an unusual place where the devil fruits are supposed to come from. That alone means that there's probably some weird stuff there to begin with. As they continue sailing and, and such, they continue their talk. As Luffy explains the, the whole thing that his grandpa told him about the little device, and something like criteria that allows him to give people his blood without them dying. Usopp was kind of interested in hearing this. He stated, well, grandpa said, um... And I don't know how he knows this, but he says it has three different ways of happening. One, some, someone or something like uh, Neko and Susu are just able to accept my blood and become like them. So there's that. Who's up thinking, huh, so if they're compatible, then they could take it and not die? As he just shrugs his shoulders and continues. He also said if somebody was strong enough, or really strong, like he said body and mind, I guess, but not sure what he meant by that. Usopp saying, well, you're a little soft in the head, but your willpower is next level, so I'm thinking that's what he meant. Luffy just saying, of course I have a soft head. It's made of rubber. Usopp just saying, okay, continue. As he gets to the final part, as he states, apparently having a devil fruit would also increase your chances, or at least uh, make it, would make it uh, possible. Though I'm not sure. As they did find that pretty interesting. But they had this change course in order to get where they needed to go. As they were sailing, getting everything ready, Usopp and Luffy decide to practice their cannonballing. Since they had a ship, a cannon, and cannonballs, they need to practice using it at least and found a little small plateau island, deciding to use that as a target. Doro has his little flashback of his past in his, while he's asleep, which we'll skip over due to the fact that it doesn't really change anything for the what-if itself, though he is woken up by the cannon blast. After Nami yells at them to stop, and that they're going to attract marines if they keep doing that. Stating that they do need to talk about something else. After sitting down, he states that they are in a good situation with food currently, but if they're going to continue sailing and even go to the Grand Line, they do have to consider the fact that they will spend quite a long time on the ocean without any island or anything to use to get more food and supplies. So they need to cook. Not them. As he continues remarking that they need to cook to also make sure that they have all the nutrients they need to prevent illnesses while at sea. During this they hear crashes as 
they just hear a guy yelling, Come out here, pirate! Pay for what you've done! As he just broke one of the barrels, he... Luffy comes out yelling, Hey, stop smashing up my ship! As he... The man with the sunglasses begins to swing his sword about the hit or at least attempt to swipe at Luffy only to be stomped on by a giant dark paw from Shushu as he just barks. The guy groaning trying to get up but not budging he states the hell is with this dog as he hears a voice saying Johnny? What, what are you doing here? Looking up the man with the sunglasses says, Big Bro Zoro? Is that you? As he says, yeah, obviously. Um, as some clarification that Zoro had to give him that he is a pirate now. Asking why he's here. As he explains that Yosuku, his friend, is who also knows Zoro, is actually pretty sick that they were resting on a small island nearby until idiots from this ship fired a cannonball at it. Luffy and Usopp just looking to the side whistling. As they hurry up and get Yosuku on to the ship, Yami, Nami checks him out and says that he has scurvy, telling Usopp and Luffy to get the limes. As they begin to crush them, pouring the juice into his mouth, going as far to try to shove all the limes they can into his mouth, not seeming to realize that they could suffocate him. Luckily though, he spits out the limes, pulling up, and begins just celebrating with Johnny, only for him to pass out. Nami yelling at him, stating, It doesn't... Work that fast, you idiot! As they introduce themselves as bounty hunters who ran into Zoro during their time as bounty hunters while he was still one, remarking that they never figured him to end up as a pirate of all things. Zoro just smirks, stating, Yeah. World's full of surprises, huh? As Nami sighs, remarking, Okay, so now that we got that all taken care of, we need to get back onto the topic of getting our ship a cook. Where Johnny states, A cook? Is that all? Oh, well then good thing you ran into us. If there's a cook you're looking for, there's only one place you need to look for to find a good one for a ship that Big Bro Zoro is sailing on. As they tell them about the Baratier. As they begin to sail, they see in the distance a ship that looks like a building on the ocean. But also designed to look somewhat like a koi fish, apparently. As they state that the owner, Zeft, made this restaurant himself and it's the restaurant where the chefs fight this confuses Usopp and Nami but Zoro and Luffy seem kind of happy about it but this is when a navy ship begins to pull up this being Iron Fist we'll just call him Iron Fist because I don't really need to bother with whatever his name is because this man could just go in the garbage. As he looks at the pirate ship, scoffing at it, as well as the bounty hunters, he states, looks like you two whelps ended up getting captured by pirates. I was expected. For belittling them for being low-level bounty hunters, as Johnny got sick of it and tossed bounty, hunt, uh, 
bounty posters all over the place showing the bounties that they go after. One does catch Nolly's eye as he grabs it. As Iron Fist just scoffs, he orders his men to take care of them as they prepare a cannonball. As they aim for the ship, Luffy gets a little ticked at this. As the darkness begins to envelop his left arm, once they fire, Luffy enlarges the fist and swats it away, surprising the marines that fire it and going down to ducking to the deck so that Luffy doesn't see them, as they are too terrified to even want to know what just happened, try to find out, or anything about it, not even tell their current captain, because he'll probably just send them to attack and get beat to hell. Which is what would have would happen, let's be honest. The cannonball luckily goes into the ocean as the ship continues to sail forward. As the two marines that fire the cannon don't say a word and just try to ignore what the, the heck they just saw. Luffy just sighs, remarking that they should hurry up and get their cook so that they can get going. As the Marines got there first, with Iron Fist sitting down with his date, trying to show off to his date, trying to be a wine connoisseur, only to be said that he is mistaken and that the wine is not the vintage he just said it was, giving the man a spoon. As the man yelled at this person, he said, Waiter, what exactly is all this? Trying to get angry at him, as the man is revealed to be blonde, curly eyebrowed, and introduces himself as Sanji, in that he is the sous chef of the restaurant. All the waiters ended up running away because they were scared. So, some of the chefs have to act as double as waiters. As Iron Fist is furious about this, he sees a bug on the floor, steps on it, and places it in his soup. As he calls Sanji back over, remarking about the soup having a fly in it. As Sanji just tries to be as calm as possible while still making Iron Fist look very well. Not very uh, good in the eyes of his date as well as everyone in the restaurant, causing him to slam his fist into the table, destroying it and the bowl where the soup was. Sanji looking down, touching the soup on the floor, says, that soup was just fine. They're just taking a fly out of it and eating it. It would have been just fine. As Iron Fist just stands above him stating, Get up so I can beat your ass. Only for Sanji to swing his legs. Resulting in Iron Fist getting pretty beat up. Two of the chefs did yell out for him to stop, but were too late. And went upstairs real quick. This being where we see another group walk in being the Straw Hats that are just seeing this while Yosuku and Johnny are watching the going merry. As they see what looks to be a man in a black suit with blonde hair holding up the guy that just ordered a cannonball to be fired at their ship being held up by his neck and beaten pretty bad. As Luffy wants to know who that guy is, only to have him stop mid sentence with Boost 
stop Nami pushing him and Zoro aside, with Susu and Neko following, as Nami and Uzab don't want to get involved in this. They're pirates, they're, there's a marine, and some crazy dude that just beat them up. So, yeah. Seeing this, Sanji drops him. As a man comes in with a peg leg saying, Sanji, what are you doing? Sanji just remarks, this piece of trash just wasted food. Right in front of him. As he clenched his fists. Only to have the man with the very tall chef hat smack Sanji with a peg leg. And with that, we see Marie running in, yelling, stating that the pirate they captured escaped, but was quickly shot in the back. As the man in question sat down and demanded food, stating that that Marine over there ordered his men not to feed or give him anything to drink. As he's recognized as the second in command of the Don Creed Pirates. And with this, he orders food as one of the chefs that got Zeph walks up asking how is he going to pay, giving his situation as a recently escaped pirate. Only to have the gun he had in his hands pointed at this chef's head. Unfortunate for him, it the chef in question is basically anime Popeye, given how his forearms look. Yeah. Only for the only for him to say wise guy, huh? As he bodies the dude with, it, with his hands grasped together, slamming him into the ground, breaking the chair, and tossing him out, saying to leave and never come back. Luffy went over to see the guy himself at the door. As, act, as Iron Fist just tried to get out of there before anything else crazy happens he sees the straw hat kid wondering what is he doing here oh, just great my men are useless well i can at least save some face if i beat him and take him out as he goes the swing towards luffy luffy pretty much just backhands the dude into the door taking one of the doors at the entrance clean off the hinges as well as some of the wall having them flown into the ocean uh, along with iron fist as the marines scattered to grab their leader and bail from this mess as L luffy is then yelled at saying kid what the hell Looking over, only finding a peg leg smacking him in the head, stating, You just broke my door and part of the wall. You're paying for that. As the argument continues, Luffy has to work there by Zeph's orders, like a month or something, in order to fix the door and wall that he broke. As he tries to keep trying to narrow it down, stating that he's trying to get to the Grand Line, only to get repeatedly smacked. This does result in him working as a, as a bus boy again. And, right, as Luffy sees his crew just sitting there, enjoying food that Sanji is providing, for f especially free food for Nami, as he goes, ah, oh, what a lovely lady. As Zoro scoffs at this, 
starting the feud between them that will last pretty much forever. As Luffy states, oh, come on, guys. What about me? Usopp just says, well, I guess we can just leave you here and we can change the Straw Hat Pirates to the Usopp Pirates. As Luffy states, I'm the captain here. As Neko and Susu are just enjoying their bowl of food, Luffy looks at him saying, Really? You too? As he goes seeing the guy that just got beat up after escaping the Marines and threatening the cooks. He looks down at him, asking if he's okay. The dude says, I'm starving, but I don't need it. Luffy says, okay, as Sanji came through the door with food and a drink, placing it in front of them. The man stated, who, why, why, Didn't, won't you get in trouble? Sanji lights his cigarette and breathes it in, stating, eat. Those who don't eat properly die a horrible, slow death. The man looked at Sanji, who had a look, and tell. He knew the pain he felt, maybe even worse. As he ate, it's delicious. It's the best thing I ever had. He continued to eat it more and more and more until it was all gone. He swallowed, stating, thanks, food. He looks at Sanji, asking, won't you get in trouble? Sanji just smirks, grabbing the plate and such, tossing them overboard, stating, well, can't get in trouble if there's no evidence, now is there? As he just smirks, the man stating, you're crazy. That... As Sanji just smirks, leading the man to a, what looks like a boat. Though I would refer to it as a dinghy, to be more accurate. As he sails away, Luffy asked why he did that. As Sanji looks at Luffy saying, oh, door boy. Well, it's simple. If I'm being honest, nobody should die hungry. Trust me, not poor. As Luffy asked, so, hey, I saw that you got pretty, you kept getting yelled at by all the other ships. What's with that? As Sanji scoffs, stating, why did I tell you? As he smirks, stating, well, I'm curious, and besides, I am going to be king of the pirates one day, so I figured, and I do, I'll still be able to ask plenty of interesting people a lot of interesting stuff. As he looks at Luffy, Sanji asks, are, are you serious? King, you, king of the pirates? Luffy just smirks, stating, yep. Sanji scoffs, stating, I can tell from your eyes, you're pretty serious. Well, I suppose one genuine answer deserves another. I stick around here because I want that old bastard Zeph to acknowledge me. Can't really leave until he does. Because I owe him a lot. As he seems to take a liking to Luffy a bit, and just states, talking about how Zeph saved him, what he lost, what he did to get this restaurant. How they were eventually saved after being stranded and starved. And how he was so desperate, food he thought about killing the old. Maybe even eating his corn. But... He ended up here. Since then, 
just been working for the old man to pay him back. He can't leave until Zeph accepts him. Once that happens, he'll set sail to the ocean as he smirks, looking up, stating, I'll find the old blue. He asks what that was as he explained what it was. A unique sea that combined all of the sea life from each of the seas. The east, west, south, north sea, all the fists right there. A miracle sea. As Luffy smirks, looking at this guy who's just smiling so genuinely. Yeah. And says, all right, I've decided. You're going to join my crew as a chef. As Sanji says, what? As Luffy just repeated, you're going to join my crew. Sanji yells, no, I am not. I'm not leaving until that old bastard acknowledges me. As Luffy grabs hold of him, stating, well, yeah, well, but who cares? Let's just get going. Sanji getting a bit annoyed. Luffy's not the best at expressing what he means. But, uh, tends to get him in trouble a lot. As this continues, only with Sanji storming in, considering it slightly since he would end up being in the same crew as Nami, considering it very heavily, stating, being in the same crew on the same ship for so long with that angel. Ah, oh, that would be heaven. As he snapped out of it, saying, I had to... But I can't. As he storms up to the kitchen with Luffy following him, trying to convince him. Only to be dragged off by some of the other chefs yelling at him, Chore boy, take care of this. As he's just giving a bunch of junk. As we switch over and see that the man that Sanji fed growing his way over to what looks like a pretty banged up ship gets on. As they recognize him at their second in command, they lead him to the captain, who be a shadow of and hear from his voice that he's very weak. As the man looks at him, saying, King, you're back? Did you? As he says, it doesn't matter. But I found a place where we can get some food, Captain. He's, the Captain smirked a little bit. Let's go. And this is where we'll be ending it for right now for this part of the What If. I do hope you have enjoyed. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell and make sure to come by next time. Later.